Today in the news, we got the overview of CES from the big three and some prototypes. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Today is the last day of CES, and to be quite honest, it wasn't that great for us PC gamers. On Intel's side, we got the new 11th gen Rocket Lake S CPUs that have been announced, and just like all the leaks said, it looks alright. Unfortunately, Intel still hasn't released pricing for this new generation, which will make or break it. I mean, it's a generation that will live less than a full year, since Alder Lake S will be announced at the end of the year, and the 400 and 500 series boards purchased now will be incompatible with the next generation. So if they don't price it right, Rocket Lake S will pretty much be dead on arrival. On AMD's side, we got the new 5000 series of CPUs for the mobile market. 13 new processors here. On the low power side, you have the U series with a mix of Zen 3 and Zen 2 architecture. And on the high performance H, HS and the new HX series of CPUs, we got all Zen 3 cores with up to 8 cores and 16 threads. Now the HX series, which is brand new, is meant to be balls to the wall for gaming and content creation with boost clocks of up to 4.8 gigahertz hertz and a TDP of 45 watts and up. As for graphics for these processors, we're still stuck with Vega with up to 8 compute units. As for the actual discrete GPUs, all we got is a picture of two new GPU designs and a promise to talk about it in the first half of this year, likely the 6700 and 6700 XT. And now if we look at NVIDIA's non-CES CES presentation, we got the RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. Unfortunately, the 3060 has 21% less CUDA cores at 3840 when compared to the 3060 Ti at 4864, which means that unfortunately, we're not looking at the best bang for the buck. In fact, if we look at the $329 price tag, it's also 21% less than the 3060 Ti at 399. At least the clock speeds are supposed to be about 7% faster than the 3060 Ti, so hopefully that makes up for the performance to make it a little more appealing to the consumer. We'll have to wait for reviews, of course, to see how that would impact the performance. Nvidia is also going to enable resizable bar on their uh, 30 series of GPUs in late February, so it's going to be interesting how much performance will be gained compared to AMD. Oh, and the 3080 Ti? It looks like it's not happening. At least not just yet. They are apparently waiting for supply to catch up to uh, announce the new GPUs, which is weird since they just announced the 3060. Unfortunately, both AMD and Nvidia have confirmed that availability of GPUs will still be very lean for Q1 of this year. Quite honestly, I think that this will probably last for the full first half of 2021. Not only that, but both have also acknowledged price increases for their GPUs, which means MSRP is no more for the foreseeable future. Actually, Zotac and EVGA just joined ASUS in the decision to increase GPU prices. For Zotac, you can see an increase between 13 and 23%, and for EVGA, between 4 and 14%. Yikes. I've got to be honest, with the price of entry to PC gaming creeping up like that and the lack of lower end high performance GPUs like Nvidia's 50 series and AMD's possible 6600 series or anything under that, PC gaming is getting harder and harder to get into. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. But let's cheer up a little because as usual at CES there are those who go pretty wild with the prototypes and one of the companies best known for this is Razer. After the triple screen laptop, Project Valerie, and of course the modular PC project, Project Christine, we got two new prototypes here from Razer. First we got Project Hazel, the world's smartest mask. It's a surgical grade N95 filtered mask with a transparent face so people can see you breathe. Okay. It says it has active ventilation, which I guess means it has a fan to push air into the mask to prevent yourself from, you know, suffocating from your own CO2. And of course, in pure razor fashion, it has full RGB support. The case it comes in will also charge the mask. Never thought I'd say that. The case also sterilizes the mask with UV light when it's in the charger. They also have another prototype called Project Brooklyn. It's an absurd concept gaming chair with a rollout 60 inch ultra wide screen. Yep. 
that makes no sense. Plus, it would still use a bucket style racing seat, which let's be honest, is pretty terrible to sit on. I bought one of those two years ago and it's in my garage collecting dust since it was so uncomfortable. Honestly, don't ever expect that thing to come out. I mean, it was all a 3D render and I don't think if CES was live, Razer would have an actual Project Brooklyn in their showroom. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I'm feeling like I've never been able to be my own, man. This will be my last stand. You know it right.